Hi, George here. And today we'll be doing this panorama out of these five images. Now I took these pictures up at Calico Ghost Town, which is in Southern California. And these are not taken with a tripod. I was just holding my camera, just being very steady with that. And I took five pictures that make up this panorama. Now I'll be doing this exact same project over in Adobe Photoshop and also in Affinity Photo. Photoshop on this channel and Affinity Photo over on my HTG Photo channel. If you want to see how this is done in those two programs, Let's take a look at this. Now, when I take this kind of a panorama, I overlap my images by almost half the image to get as much in there for elements to work with to actually stitch these together. And you can see that if I take this picture here and just kind of overlap that, it's right about in here someplace. Let's see, right there's pretty close, kind of like that. And then this one comes in and would fit in about here. Now, this is almost the same picture, but not quite. It's pretty close, but not quite. There's a little bit more on the ground down here. I'll leave that one in. And this has less of an overlap right there. And our final image over here is the right hand side. And that's right about in there. So you can see how those pictures will overlap to make up the full panorama. I actually don't have to have both of these two pictures that are in the middle. I could leave one of these two off, but I'm gonna leave them in just to give Photoshop elements just a little bit more information to work with on the panorama. Now. You could try to overlap these yourself and then adjust values and so forth. It would be a lot of work and the sky values kind of change because of the direction that I'm facing. So it's really not a good solution. But luckily Photoshop Elements has a tool to do this. And this over here in the guided edits and over on photo merge and right down here, photo merge panorama. And this is a great tool. Now to use this tool, first select your images, Notice down here, just that one is selected. I'm gonna come down here, I'll click on this one, I'll hold the control key down, and then I will select all five of those images like that. Notice that white outline on all five of those. When I choose the photo merge, now it only shows you just part of the picture in here, don't worry about that, it will actually give you the panorama for the whole thing. Right hand side, you have some different options in here. Auto panorama, perspective, cylindrical, spherical, collage, and reposition. You can try the different ones if you wanted to see what the effect is. I have always used the auto panorama without any problems on that. There are also some settings down here. Blend images together, that's good. Vignette removal, that means that if the images have some vignetting or darkening around the edges, this will take that out, not a bad idea. Geometric distortion correction, I normally leave that in. And most importantly is content aware fill on your transparent area down here. What this means is as the images are put together, they don't exactly line up top to bottom and mine don't by quite a bit. There's gonna be areas that don't have any information in there and you can have Photoshop Elements automatically come back in and fill that in with information that it grabs from other parts of the picture. And it does a very good job at that. So I don't really just have all of these things checked. Come in here and select Create Panorama. And now Photoshop Elements goes in and compares the images. This is why you wanna have as much overlap as possible because it matches the images up, finds the right layout for that, and then merges those together into one large panorama. And there you go, did a real nice job. Now notice that we have these little moving ants around here that shows the areas in here that were filled in by that autofill. No problem on the sky, that was easy. A little bit up there, no problem. Down here, it comes in and it fills in and grabs from the image up here. It actually grabbed just some of this stuff and copied it down there. We'll do a little bit of work on this to clean that up. Same thing over here, it copied from just above and pulled it down here, but I think we're okay because it's kind of dirt, but we'll check that as well. So there is that panorama, looks great as you can see. Did a real nice job. Just needs a little bit of touch up. And we'll do that over in expert mode. So over here to continue editing in expert. And there it is, here's our final panorama. Comes in as a new file as you can see here with the originals in behind. So we can just get those out of the way. Those are no longer needed. And you can see the individual images in here and the layer masks that were used and you can see which parts of which were used. Let me just hide all of this stuff. It took a little bit from the bottom of that one and a bit of the sky up in here. It did that chunk over in there. This middle chunk in here. So you can see it does a real careful job of trying to find the exact right spot to get the best image for the panorama. That little bit, and there's that final bit there. Okay, back to the finish up here. And so inside of this selection, I'll just 
zoom in on that. There's that selection boundary. You can see I copied this bush here and stuck it down here and kind of copied it again right down over here. And this thing was copied down over here. A bit of fence was copied from up here and put down here. We just want to randomize this a bit so you don't actually notice that duplication happening. I'll do Control D to deselect that. A little bit of a line showing right in here. So let's just do just a touch of cleanup on this. It won't take very much. Just real fast clone stamp tool work. And I'll expand the window out so it's easier to see. There we go. Over to our clone stamp tool. And you can kind of see there's the size right there. A little hard to see. Against it. There you see it right there. That's our brush size. That's just fine. All I want to do is just take out anything which is obviously duplicated or things which really shouldn't be there, like this bit of a fence right down here. We'll start off with that. I'll just take some of the bush right here, hold the Alt key down, and click to select a clone from spot, and then just paint that over what you want to clean up. And that's all that needed. It's a bit of a line right here showing. I'm just going to come in and do some copy and paste just a little bit to kind of confuse that area. And that should work out fine for us. There you go. That's no longer noticeable. The bit right here. We have this bit here from up there. That's pretty easy to see. So I'll copy some of this over here and just bring that in on top and change that effect. And a duplicated rock right there. Now this bush here matches that and that. We can fix those. I'll just grab some dirt from over here and just drop it on top like that. And just come in and do just a little bit of this changing of things so you don't have any exact obvious matches happening in there. And that's really all we need in that section. I think that works out great. Let's just scroll to the right carefully in here and check that line, which was right in here. And I think that's okay. It actually cuts down, and there it is right down there. Just a little bit of a problem showing here. I'm just going to pull this straight down right there. That solves that. Now go over here to the right-hand side. I think that's actually in the photograph. I think that's correct. So I won't bother with that. There's actually a tent right down there. Now we'll go over here and check the ground around that cannon. I think we're pretty much okay. Yeah, I see one rock here is duplicated right there. So we'll just grab some of the dirt from over here, put it right on there, and that's all we need. That's now cleaned up. Let's go back and fit the view here to fit screen. Looks good over there. Looks fine over here. And there we go. There's our finished panorama done very quickly and easily here by using that guided edit. And don't forget to check out the other versions of this exact same project in Adobe Photoshop, which I'll be putting on this channel and over in Affinity Photo, which I'm putting over on my HTG Photo channel. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click on the like button, click share. Also, make sure you subscribe to get all my videos in the future. And if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.